So with things being the way they are right now in the United States, I thought it was a good time to upload this video and show every one of my subscribers how to make themselves an escape and evade bag. A small bag that you can carry on your person at all times. And if you run into a really bad situation, this bag will help you out exponentially. I show you this bag from a civilian point of view. And I also show you this bag from an active military point of view. So this is valuable information and you're going to want to watch this. So here we go. Okay, you've had an incident. You're away from your vehicle. You're away from your bug out bag. You're away from everything that's important. But fortunately, you watch this channel. Okay, you're lost. You're away from your vehicle. You don't have your bug out bag. You don't have your EDC. But if you followed my channel, you're still good to go because you have built yourself an escape and evade bag like the one I'm showing right here. And if you haven't built your own escape and evade bag, I'm going to show you what's in mine and how to assemble your own. Plus, I'm going to bring this guy, EOD Fish, to the table. What he brings to the table is he's still active Air Force. He worked air crew survival for four years and EOD for eight. He's got his own YouTube channel and there's a lot of really valuable information on here. So I'm going to show you my escape and evade bag and how to make it. And I'm going to show you a variation of his as well as leaving links to his channel. So you're going to want to sit back, relax, and check this out. Okay, this is the bag that I have with me at all times. And with this simple bag, which is called an escape and evade, I can make it a night or two or three, pretty much anywhere I am, and then make it back to my get home bag, my bug out location, my bug in location, or my vehicle. No two ways about it. I'm going to show you what's in this bag. I'm going to leave you links so you can get it if you don't already have it. And I'm also going to show you an active military soldier's bag that's a different variation, but it's valuable information nonetheless. So check this out. So here we go. We're starting with a Max Maxpedition fatty bag. It has an outside pocket, but I've got this pretty jammed. So the only thing I have going on in there right now is a chem light stick and a morale pad. I'm a morale patch. On the on the uh, zipper pulls, I keep. This is pretty old. I keep a uh, Spartan light little LED light if it's completely dark and I am in a ditch or wherever I might be I can still see what's going on inside this pouch okay so right off the bat right off the bat the first thing you're gonna see is an epinephrine pen these are really really expensive but I carry them because snake bites scorpions bee stings happen and some people not myself but some people have allergic reactions to them when you're on the trail, you should be ready to help anybody else, not just yourself. So there's that, Epinef EpiPen. The second thing is a Pocket Boy Silky Saw. These things are absolutely and utterly amazing. You can cut down a five inch log, no problem. This thing goes right through it like nobody's business. One of the best saws. I have one of these, a DeWalt 20 volt chainsaw in my truck, as well as a Sven saw. You can hear the marmots screaming. Hear that? Okay, the next thing you're going to notice is a marine flare. I've had this in here for a long time. This is my, if all else entirely fails and I need a fire because I'm dying, that's why I carry these. Uh, G 
cheap compass and whistle with a thermometer, but it's actually fairly accurate, which is surprising. It's good to know the temperature no matter where you're at, in my opinion. Okay, I carry a, I carry on my person at every day, I carry a multi-tool, I carry a pocket knife, and I carry a flashlight every day, no matter what. So this is a means of sharpening that. Do you see what I'm saying? Always have a method to sharpen your knife. You never know, in my opinion. Over here, incredibly sharp straight razor. A large safety pin, a real, real large safety pin. Just in case, you never know. Chem lights, if you can fit them, fit them. Infection guard, hand sanitizer, you get a good size gash or cut, this works. Burns like you read about, but it works. It will sanitize the cut. Fishing line, so I think this is about 15 pound, and there's probably about 30 yards here. A small pocket screwdriver with several different bits in it. A hand saw. Now I carry the silky saw. If you ever use one of these small hand saws, you know that they are no joke. They hurt, but if something happens to the silky saw, I still have a means of cutting wood. A good size hank of 550 cord. 550 cord can is worth its weight in gold if you know how to use it. Thick lighter. A large set of nail clippers with the nail file inside. And I also carry one of these in my pocket at all times. Okay, the next thing I have is a magnesium block. Magnesium blocks are invaluable. You simply take your knife, you make shavings out of it, and it is incredibly flammable. So if it's wet out, if it's snowy out, one of these could completely save your butt. A couple of packages of water purification tablets. I almost never use these, but they're good to have. Another whistle. You can never have too many whistles. Why not? as well as a military can opener, magnesium in ferrule rod. Duct tape. Gorilla tape. A good amount, a very good amount, cut into a one inch strip. Depending on where you're at, tweezers for removing ticks. A small container of a variety of fire starters. Several different types. The Altoids container keeps them nice and dry for the most part. Now this is something I never use, but it's something you hope you never use either. Say you've injured one of your hands, your wrist, your fingers. This allows you to start a fire with one hand. Simply by pressing down one handed. Very good to have. As you can see, it's in like new condition. I have yet to have to use it. Fishing leaders. Any of you guys that have do this stuff on your own, you know why I carry these. These are great for starting. These are great for making traps for small animals, whatever, or fishing as a matter of fact. And the ubiquitous, always around, zip ties. These things have a million uses and that's for a reason. Okay, on this inside pocket right here, this is everything that I carry. More fire starters. You starting to get the hint here? Fire is important. This is a pack of military pyro pack. This gel is incredibly flammable. This is last case scenario and like it says, do not eat. I mean, Avoid skin and eye contact, use water to wash, but do not eat. As, as delicious as liquid fire may seem, do not eat. I carry a SOL survival blanket. 
This is a space blanket for one or two people. I'm almost always solo, but I'm a big dude, so I carry one so I can wrap it around. A sewing kit. Always carry a sewing kit. I have one in my side pocket. I have one in my, my EDC in the truck. And I also have an additional one in the truck. That can serve you not just for clothing. That can close a wound. It won't be awesome, but it will work. And another German space blanket. They're really, really good to have. Now, now this inside pocket here would be almost all my EDC only first aid. Including this handful right here, I have three separate first aid kits in the truck, very large ones, and I think they're incredibly important because, again, if it isn't for you, it might be for somebody else. I'm not the type of person that can walk by someone that's wounded and leave them there onto their own devices. So this is all labeled. Blister packs, bandages, butterfly bandages, sterile strips, sutures, and any type of medication you may think of carrying. High-powered painkillers are not the worst idea. This is more of the same. This is burn gel, butterflies, stitches, sutures. And I don't know what that even says. Burn gel. Lots and lots of burn gel. Because when you're playing with fire, especially in an emergency situation, you need the ability to tend to yourself if you get a burn. A burn sucks. And I carry uh, poison ivy towelettes. Lots of poison ivy towelettes. And I also carry these. There's one of these in my wallet. There's one in my rear pocket. These are all over the place. These wipes, 30% deep Ben's wipes, they keep bugs away, period. I don't dig bugs. And last but not least is Quick Clot Sport stops the bleeding it feels like you're pouring liquid hot molten magma on your skin but it does its job and it completely works so there's that so check this out i just wanted to add this real quick because it was something that wasn't in my edc bag or my grab bag my go bag my everything's gone to shit bag because i gave it to somebody else and it's this it's oral rehydration salts. These are Enduralites. The reason I got these right now is because I gave my, or my oral rehydration salts to somebody that I know that was dehydrated. And it fixed him up like that. So there's that. So now you're going to take a look at EOD Fish's Escape and Evade Bag made by Tactical Taylor. It's a very similar setup to my own. Mine's more of a civilian comfort edition his is more straightforward and based on military experience links to his channel will be below as long as links to everything in my bag will be below if you don't have this done get this done because in the times that we're looking at right now this bag could absolutely without a doubt save your life or the life of your family members no hype no drama it just is what it is so check this out Alright guys, so we've got, uh, I never ever intended to make this video, but I was cleaning out the garage the other day and found it and uh, thought this would be a fun little challenge kind of thing, alright? So, uh, way back uh, when I first came into the Air Force uh, and was on Light Fighter a lot, uh, Tactical Taylor put out their E&E &E pouch, uh, which at the time the rumor going around was the SEER guys out of McCord uh, had come up with this idea. Nobody knew what they wanted packaged in there, and it was kind of a running discussion, what is supposed to go in here. So again, this is, you know, 10, 12 years ago, I set this thing up, and uh, I'm just gonna run through what I what I had in it at the time, uh, based on what I knew then, and uh, I wanna see uh, what other people are using this thing for. If you've got a similar size kit, I'd like to know uh, what you put in there pros and cons and you guys can absolutely sharpshoot the crap out of this thing because again it's uh 10 years old information and clearly there are things that i could do better now so let's uh let's talk about that all right so opening this thing up you can see i've got it uh packed pretty full of stuff uh i could 
probably fit a little bit more and there are absolutely some things that I should uh, change out and put better quality items, smaller items. Uh, now that I've got a little bit more disposable income than when I was in E1, I could absolutely do that. Um, so things that uh, I need to change, let's let's talk about it, right? So to start off with, I got a couple of chem lights in here. These are absolutely expired by this point in time. I don't know if they'd work, but uh, I've got a couple visible ones. And then I've got two of the four inch uh, IR chem lights, right? I have a, uh, a glow in the dark, a uh, little one by one patch here, and then an IR one by one patch, right? So a couple of different marking methods, right? Uh, looking at the, the top half of this pouch, I have a, uh, a lighter that I have taped up here, so hopefully the button can't be depressed. And then uh, based on the crew field I was in at the time, I thought I had to tie everything in here. Uh, so, you know, one of you AFU QI, uh, QA guys, uh, come check out my bowline knots here. They're pretty all right, and my taping is uh, per the TO, all right? <clears throat> A lot of this is based off the uh, SRU-16P, the little parachute survival kit. I thought that thing was like the coolest thing when I was working in that, that realm because it was the closest thing to an actual survival kit as far as I was concerned. All right, so uh, we've got in this bag here, we've got a little uh, Junior Phoenix IR strobe here taped uh, backwards on the battery, so that's not on. All right, all that's taped in. And then we've got some uh, water procurement stuff here. All right, so we've got some uh, A condom or two, and then a little bottle of uh, iodine here, all right, which I probably should change out if we're at that point in time. All right. This is a little bit of a rat's nest of cordage here, so I'm sure it'll be fun to repack. I've got a, a little whistle there. Got a box of matches for redundancy, some uh, waterproof safety matches there. And a uh, signal mirror, all right, taped up so I don't scratch that up uh, despite never unpacking this thing. Continuing on to the top here, this is absolutely something that I should have changed out. So it's not as bulky as the, the military compass, but this is definitely a huge compass. All right, so I've got a, uh, an old large compass there. Uh, I don't remember who makes this one, but looking at the lettering, I think that's a Princeton Tech compass. All right, I think that's their style. We've got a little wire saw still in the package here. Uh, one of those little razor blade knives uh, taped up and uh, tied in there. And then uh, a couple uh, large, large sandwich bags with the little twist tie on them. I don't remember the capacity of these, but they're they're pretty good size. They might hold a gallon of water. I can't remember for sure. And that's it on the top half. All right, moving down to the uh, lower portion here. We've got some uh, snare wire and needles on a little cardboard backer there that also has some fishing line and fish hooks. All right, I don't think I came up with this. I'm pretty sure this is straight out of the, the 16P. And then we've got uh, four little, I assume these are tinder packs. If they don't start on fire, uh, then they're probably bullion cubes, but these look like tinder packs, all right? Bagged up so they stay dry. I would try fire before I tried soup, and then I'd know which way to go. some uh, official military tinfoil here, all right? Make a nice pot or something out of that. I assume it's creased enough that it's gonna have holes all over the place. And then uh, some stuff, I think I salvaged these from MREs way back in the day, so who knows how, how rank this stuff is, but we've got some toilet paper in there, little towelettes, some flavor packs, and I think I powered it up with some bullion cubes in there. Uh, yeah, I can see some packets of bullion. There's probably a little Cerolite pack in there too. Yep, and some cider, because everybody's going to feel better with some hot cider, right? I have a uh, survival blanket here, all right? 
I don't know how big that gets, and if I unwrap it, it's never gonna get this small again. It's not just a space blanket. It's got the green coating on the other side, so it's a little bit more uh, resilient than a traditional space blanket. And that is it. I didn't put anything in the, uh, the clear part because I didn't have anything pertinent at the time. But uh, you can see, uh, right, wrong, or indifferent, you can fit a pretty hearty amount of stuff in here, right? I'm not gonna get a super cool uh, exploded kit view here because there's just too much cordage. All right, so you can see I don't have any actual cordage in the kit uh, as far as loose stuff goes, but uh, based on what I was doing at the time, I would assume each length of that is 36 inches or so because that was the cool thing to do back then. Uh, and you can see I've got, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, at least seven things tied in there. So, uh, you know, rough public math, 21 feet of cordage. It's a hundred, hundred pound line. So uh, a pretty decent amount of cordage and you could probably do some, some good stuff with that. Uh, you could salvage one, make a buzz saw for one of these things or something. Uh, so there it is. That's my uh, my little tactical tailor E and E pouch uh, survival kit thing. Uh, definitely some things to improve upon. Some some items that maybe don't need to be in there. I'm sure there's a smaller little morale packet that I could put in there. I could absolutely save some room with a different compass. And you know, I probably wouldn't put matches. I'd probably change that out for a ferro rod or X tac thing or something. Um, but there it is. I'm uh, curious what you guys think about this, knowing that I haven't touched it in about 10 years and uh, what kind of kits you guys are setting up. So I appreciate you guys watching. Hopefully this was a fun one. Not something I ever planned on doing, but again, I, uh, it was a nice small package that I could throw into my luggage and film on the road. So thanks guys. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like, share, and subscribe. Links to EOD Fish and links to everything in this video will be in the description box below.